This video is about logarithmic modeling. I will show you how to make a logarithmic equation that fits some data. This is AP Precalculus Topic 2.14. If you appreciate this content, please give it a like. The average salary for a church pastor across the U.S. increases as the size of the church increases. The graph above shows the average pastor salaries for various church sizes. We know that logarithmic parent functions look like this. So it seems like a logarithmic function would be a good fit for this data. A logarithmic function model has the form y equals a plus b times the natural log of x or y equals a plus b times the log of x where a and b are constants and b cannot equal zero. Example one, selected values for the logarithmic function L are given in the table above, where L of X is equal to A plus B times the natural log of X. Part A, use the given data to write two equations that can be used to find the values for the constants A and B in the expressions for L of X. Each input-output pair will give us an equation when we plug in the input value for X and we let the output value equal the result. So when we plug in 2 right here, we have the equation a plus b times the natural log of 2. And this should equal the output value, which is 3. So this is one equation that they're talking about. We can make another equation out of the input-output pair 5 comma 7. If we plug in 5 for x, we should get 7 for the result. So that gives us a plus b times the natural log of 5, and that should equal 7. This is the second equation that they were asking us for. Part b, find the values of a and b. We can use the elimination method to solve this system of equations. I reverse the order of these two equations just so we can have fewer negatives. I put the uh, larger numbers on the top. But to solve this system using elimination, you want to subtract one equation from the other. It's important that one of the variables cancel out and the a values will always cancel out. So if you subtract the second equation from the first, the a values cancel out. And then uh, what do I do with b natural log 5 minus b natural log 2? Well, guess what? There's not much I can do with that. So I'm just going to write those next to each other just the way I said it. So b natural log 5 minus b natural log 2. That's the best I can do for now. On the right-hand side of the equation, I have 7 minus 3 which is 4. Now that a is gone, I should be able to solve this equation for b. My next step will be to factor out the common factor of b and put it in front of parentheses like this. That will leave behind the natural log 5 minus the natural log of 2 is equal to 4. We have learned that the difference of two logs can be written as the single log of a quotient. So we can write this as b times the natural log of 5 over 2 is equal to 4. Now, dividing both sides by the natural log of 5 over 2 gives us b is equal to 4 over the natural log of 5 over 2. So this is one of the values that we were being asked to find, the value of b. Now we just have to find the value of a. Now that we know the value of b, we can use either one of the original equations to find the value of a. I'm going to pick this blue one. So we know that a plus b times the natural log of 2 is equal to 3. Uh, let's get a on one side by subtracting b natural log 2 from both sides. So a equals 3 minus b natural log 2. But we know what b is from the previous part of the problem. 
So all we have to do is substitute this expression in for b, and we will have the value of a. So this is the value of a. Notice that this part right here is the b that I just substituted in, b times the natural log of 2. However, if I wanted to, I could put the natural log of 2 into the numerator, and I think that would be a little bit tidier. So both of these are valid answers for A. I want to use the change of base formula to show you one more way of writing the value of A. We have learned that the log base C of A divided by the log base C of B can be written as the log base B of A like this. If C happens to be a base E, then we have the natural log of A over the natural log of B, and that still will equal the log base B of A. So let's apply the change of base formula to this part of the expression. We could write A equals 3 minus 4 times the log base 5 over 2 of 2. I'm showing you a variety of ways of writing the answer, mostly because a lot of the AP exam will be multiple choice. So I need you to be able to recognize the answer in many forms. And for that reason, I'm going to show you one more. Um, we know that when there is a number in front of a logarithm, you're allowed to put it as the exponent. So I can move this 4 to the exponent of the 2, like it'll end up here. And uh, 2 to the 4th power is 16. So here's one more way that we could write the expression for A. So this is what you would do if uh, this part of the question was not calculator active. Uh, of course, we could easily type these expressions into a calculator and get a decimal answer if we had access to a calculator. Let's see, 4 divided by the natural log of 5 halves is 4.365. So the decimal value of B is approximately 4.365. Now let's type this expression in to get a decimal value for A. That is negative 0 0.026 if you round. However, if you do have access to a graphing calculator, it's going to be easier to find the values of A and B using the regression capabilities of your calculator. Hit the stat button and hit enter for edit. And let's type the input values into L1 and the output values into L2. Once you have the data typed in, hit the stat button, switch to the calc menu, and choose option 9 for natural log regression. You can either scroll all the way down there or you can just hit the number 9. Just in case we need the regression equation later, I want you to go down to where it says store regression equation and choose Y1 right here by hitting vars, Y vars, enter for function, and enter again for Y1. This way, the regression equation will be stored in Y1 if we need to use it later. So hit enter a couple of times until it calculates the regression model. So there's your value of A and your value of B, just like we found before. For example 2, let's go back to the data about average pastor salary as a function of church size. Part A. Use the regression capabilities of your graphing calculator to find a logarithmic function model for the data above of the form s of p is equal to a plus b times the natural log of p, where p represents the church size and s is the average pastor salary in thousands of dollars. Hit the stat button and hit enter. And let's enter the input values in L1 and the output values in L2. Once you have the data all typed in, hit STAT, switch to the CALC menu, 
and choose option 9 for natural log regression. Go down to where it says store regression equation and choose y1, vars, y vars, enter, and enter for y1. Hit enter a couple more times. And here's the value of a and b that will be used to form the natural log regression equation. The answer to part a is s of p is equal to negative 91.542 plus 29.909 times the natural log of p. Part b, using the model found in part a, what is the predicted annual salary in thousands of dollars for a pastor whose church size is 500 people? In other words, we need to evaluate s at 500. Remember that we had the calculator store the regression model as y1 in the calculator. So, we need to evaluate y1 at 500. You can make y1 appear on your calculator by hitting alpha trace enter. To evaluate y1 at 500, you simply put 500 in parentheses next to it and hit enter. So, 94.330 if you round up. We can either write S at 500 is equal to 94.330 thousand dollars or, or S at 500 equals 94.329 thousand dollars if you truncate. Example 3. The most common and preferred method to measure sound intensity levels is in decibels. The sound intensity level beta in decibels of a sound having intensity i in watts per meter squared is modeled in the function beta at i is equal to a plus b times the log of i. The sounds of noisy traffic has intensity 1 times 10 to the negative 5 watts per meter squared and corresponds to 70 decibels. A loud concert has an intensity of 1 and corresponds to 120 decibels. Part A. Use the given data to write two equations that can be used to find the values for the constants a and b in the expressions for beta and i. The first input-output pair leads to the equation a plus b times the log of 10 to the negative 5 power is equal to 70. Notice that the input of 1 times 10 to the negative 5 power can just be written as 10 to the negative 5th power because we're only multiplying by 1, we don't need to write the 1. And there's your output of 70. The second input-output pair will give us another equation, a plus b times the log of. The input is 1 and the output is 120. The blue equation can be simplified quite a bit because the log and the base 10 will cancel each other out leaving behind just negative 5. So I'm going to write the negative 5 before the b giving us a minus 5b is equal to 70. The red equation can also be simplified because the log of 1 is 0. This is something that you should have memorized or you can think of it as uh, because we have this invisible base 10 and log means what power will turn 10 into a 1. Well 10 to the 0 power is 1 so log of 1 is 0. I don't want you to have to go through that every time. This is very common go ahead and just memorize that the log of 1 is 0. So, so the red equation simplifies to a plus b times 0 is equal to 120. Of course, b times 0 is just 0, so we don't need to write this term at all. We can just write a equals 120. For part b, we will use these two equations to find the values of a and b. 
Of course, we already found the value of a in part a, so we just need to find the value of b. Let's use the blue equation. But uh, we know that a is 120, so the blue equation becomes 120 minus 5b is equal to 70. Subtracting 120 from both sides gives negative 5b is equal to negative 50. Dividing both sides by negative 5 gives us b is equal to 10. So that's it for part b. Part c, the human eardrum can burst when sounds reach an intensity level of 1 times 10 to the fourth power watts per meter squared. According to the model found above, what is the predicted number of decibels required to burst a human eardrum? We can write a model for the number of decibels as a function of intensity if we plug in the values of A and B that we just found, here and here. So here's our model for decibels as a function of intensity. We just need to evaluate this model at an intensity of 1 times 10 to the fourth power. In other words, we can just plug in 10 to the fourth power, which will equal 120 plus 10 times the log of 10 to the fourth power. Log and base 10 will cancel each other out, leaving behind this 4. So the number of decibels at intensity 10 to the fourth power will equal 120 plus 10 times 4. That's 120 plus 40, or 160 decibels. Don't forget to include the units. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, but also if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.